I wanted to bring your attention to an article this morning that we ran across in the register. Uh, this article covers a new uh, vulnerability that was uh, made public in, uh, in regard to Pivotal's Spring Framework. In this article, it talks about these, um, the data rest uh, capabilities or, or uh, APIs being uh, vulnerable to remote code execution uh, within the Spring Framework. So this is critical for a number of reasons. One is uh, Pivotal Spring Framework is used very widely in terms of uh, website development. Uh, so there are thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of sites that are using uh, Spring Framework. It's a very popular component. The remote execution vulnerability in this is similar to uh, what we saw in the struts vulnerabilities that were announced last year, which also led to the uh, breach at Equifax. So uh, if you're using Spring Framework, you absolutely want to take this uh, seriously, I'm going to put a link in this uh, below this video so that you can get a hold of this uh, uh, of this particular article and read more about it. But I think one of the important things that I wanted to highlight in this as well is Sonotype's response to this kind of vulnerability coming up. So at Sonotype, we are constantly monitoring the internet and over 150 different sources of information to find out about vulnerabilities as they come into play. In this particular vulnerability, it was actually um, uh, announced uh, in 2017, uh, even though some of the pivotal uh, specific references were made public uh, just last week. So months ago, we had actually updated our data set within our uh, Nexus platform to make that available to our customers. So if you're using one of our IQ server-based products like Nexus Firewall, Nexus Lifecycle, or Nexus Auditor, you're already aware of these vulnerabilities and you have been for several months. Now for the organizations that are using our products, what you're seeing uh, within this, if one of your developers has picked or is using the Spring Framework uh, data rest uh, uh, component, is you're seeing which versions of that component and the previous versions that are affected. You're also going to see within uh, our product which versions are actually safe to use. And you'll see that this particular version, a couple of steps ahead, is the more popular version being used right now. Uh, and that that would be safe to migrate to if you were using uh, one of the vulnerable versions. So uh, for our customers, we're happy to report that we've known about this particular vulnerability for months. Our data sets have been updated and, and those have been made available to you. Now, this is critical uh, in terms of when we talk about DevSecOps, we want to make sure that our customers not only have automated responses which tell them what particular vulnerable components are in use or their developers are considering using, um, but they have fast feedback loops that enable their developers to know when they select that component, hey, that particular version is vulnerable, there are safe versions that are available for you, for you to use, or if you have an application that's already in production or somewhere further down the development uh, or DevOps pipeline, that we are integrated with that DevOps pipeline all the way through to production so that any of our customers that had this particular vulnerable component out there within their uh, application portfolio were immediately notified that this particular vulnerability uh, did exist for them. So uh, that's, it provides not only automated information that says this particular vulnerable component is out there, but it provides automated feedback to the developers to say this uh, vulnerability is there, here's a, uh, a safe version of that component to use. And when you go through to fully remediate these particular components, then, uh, then you can close your feedback loop or close your remediation loop even faster. So DevSecOps is not just about informing people that you have vulnerabilities, but expediting the way that they can fix those vulnerabilities 
uh, uh, that are in their uh, environments. So for those of you out there that are watching, uh, if you, uh, that are wondering what action you might be able to take, for those of you that are already uh, Nexus platform customers, uh, you already have data available to you in those products and you have, uh, as I said, for months. So you can uh, look at the, the products if uh, to just verify where those components are being used within your portfolio. Uh, your developers using our IDE plugins are already aware of the vulnerabilities and the remediation paths that are available. If you're using Nexus Repository, there is a feature in that called Repository Health Check, and that will tell you if you have vulnerable versions of uh, the, the Spring data um, or the Spring framework in your uh, portfolio or, or in your repository of these components. And if you are not yet a customer of Sonotype and you want availability to one of the free services that we offer, I'll put a link uh, below this video for our application health check so that you can uh, uh, scan or analyze one of your applications and see if it has this particular vulnerability uh, present in it. The application health check is a free service that we offer to anyone out in the community uh, so that you can take immediate action and get information uh, made available to you. And then if you want to protect your entire life cycle, you can look at solutions like uh, Sonotype's Nexus lifecycle product that can be integrated with your entire uh, DevOps pipeline, uh, as well as monitor what's in production. So hopefully you found this update helpful, and uh, I will put some links in, as I said, for you to take action on. We'll also provide continued updates on this particular vulnerability uh, on our blog for more information there. So be sure to check out blog.sonotype.com for that info as it's updated. Thanks all, and have a great day. Bye.